Hi, my name is Dee Dee Burke, and I'm the current ELA instructional coach at Willow Ridge High School. So, what are the top three priorities of an AP? Number one is safety. You need to ensure the safety of the students, faculty, and staff at all times, and oversee the day-to-day -day operations. Number two, you have to breathe the vision and the mission of not only the district, but the campus as well. And then number three is student achievement. You need to foster relationships with the students and then also with the faculty and staff, help them hone in on their practices and that filters back around to the students. And so we just have this cycle of inspiration that positively impacts student achievement. When it comes to my Title I experience, I'm going into my 15th year in education and I have solely worked at Title I campuses. I've been at Willow Ridge High School since 2008. Before I truly understood what Title I was, I recognized that my students wanted to achieve and they wanted to do well, but they didn't have everything that they needed. And so I naturally tried to provide for them more resources and more opportunities for them to, um, to show their growth and for them to experience success. As I grew in my experience, I fully understood what Title I was. And so we all understand that for a title, for a campus to be Title I, 40% of the student population um, has to come from low income families. And these students are typically low achieving, at risk of failing, and on free and reduced lunch. Okay, so now the uh, every student succeeds at ensures the equity, right? And so with that equity, more funds are poured into a Title I campus, and those funds are used to provide more resources and meet the needs of students, and also to ensure that highly qualified teachers are in, in the classrooms. So we all know that um, all students' needs are the same. However, at a Title I campus, the needs are greater. And so with the needs being greater, we have to understand that some students come in with these distractions from their outside life that tend to interfere with their learning and also with their receptiveness of the learning as well. In the same breath, every student isn't the same at a Title I campus, and we have to recognize that and be flexible in our practices. And so with that being said, um, that's one of the reasons why in your CIP you have multiple goals to address the diversity, right, of those gaps and of those needs. Um, you have to also recognize that it's not a one-size-fits-all resolution, right? It's not a one-size-fits-all. You have to really be flexible um, in your practices. And in order for you to succeed in the classroom and at a Title I campus, from my experience, you have to not only be flexible, but you have to be empathetic, you have to be compassionate, um, you have to be patient, and you have to address every day as a brand new day and an opportunity to do great things. We have these kids five days a week, and so we have an opportunity to, um, to really impact them in a positive way. And so we have to make sure that we fully embrace that we are holistically growing um, the kids every single day. And we have to address every day as a brand new day and an opportunity to do great things. When it comes to improving tier one instruction and rigor, first, you have to be immersed in it. You can't ensure greatness from afar. You got to be a part of it. And with instruction, the instruction has to be real, relevant, relatable, and attainable for the kids, right? If the kids experience success, then that builds their confidence. When their confidence is built, then you can start scaffolding up. When it comes to the planning, you have to embrace the backwards planning. And so with that being said, you have to keep the following questions in mind. What is it that I want the students to learn? How will I know they've learned it? If they have not learned it, what do I need to do? And then when they've learned it, what's the next step to mastery? And in order for you to fully do that, you have to have the data. You have to have data that shows not only the student growth, but the student gaps. And then from there, you use that data to drive your instruction and you can remediate and accelerate. Now, what would I do to build trust with the staff and with the community? First, I have to have all stakeholders involved. I have to be clear with my vision and my mission. I have to be honest, open, receptive, supportive. I have to authentically listen and follow through, treat everyone fair and with care, be committed. And I also have to uh, be a resource provider and seeker. And I have to do my job effectively and not ask anyone to do anything that I'm not willing to do. So what does a positive climate and culture look like? That's my wheelhouse. For my uh, few, uh, Empowering Future Leaders project, I focused on improving campus culture through boosting teacher morale. And that had a real positive impact on the campus. And so what does that environment look like? Um, all stakeholders are involved. We're all aligned with our vision and our mission. We're collaborative. We communicate clearly. Everyone is willing to do the work. Um, we support one another. We trust and respect each other. And we also celebrate push, motivate, and inspire everyone, okay?
tuning in. My name is Dee Dee Burke.